humans are used to the stuff that is observable to our eyes. That's classical physics, whose roots go back to the time of Aristotle and Archimedes. It deals with the everyday phenomena of nature and things like motion, energy and force. People like Galileo, who observed the four largest moons of Jupiter, Kepler, who invented the first powerful telescope, as well as the field of optics, and Newton, who developed the three basic laws of motion and the theory of universal gravity, revolutionized classical physics. Later on, at the turn of the 20th century, quantum mechanics started to eventually gain popularity, thanks to people like Max Planck, Niels Bohr, Albert Einstein, and others. This means people started to deal with the stuff that can't be seen with our naked eyes. Humans were slowly starting to understand that very, very thin particles were responsible for the way things work. Quantum is the singular of quanta, which kind of means pieces. It is used as a measure of the minimum amount of something, like energy, that something can possess. In short, quantum physics is the physics of subatomic particles. It underlies how atoms work, which in turn explains why chemistry and biology work as they do. Niles Bohr and Max Planck are often referred to as the founding fathers of quantum physics, and they both received a Nobel Prize for their work on quanta. Right after them is Einstein, which described light as quanta in his theory of the photoelectric effect. He also won the Nobel Prize for that. Physics as we know it seems to break down once we look at a small enough level. And when we look at this tiny level, we see that a particle can exist in a state where it doesn't have a well-defined value for properties like position, momentum and energy. And that's when wave function comes into play. It mathematically describes the wave characteristics of a particle. The particle is its wave function. It exists everywhere simultaneously. Modern physics doesn't see particles as things, but rather as vibrations. Objects are not particles, but fields. Take photons, for example, which are quanta of light. They are unit excitations of the electromagnetic field. It takes an extreme amount of energy for a photon to exist. If there's no excitation in the field, there is no photon. Photons constantly vibrate and have momentum. So particles don't even exist, fields do. And string theory is the best explanation for that. String theory replaces all particles with tiny vibrating strings that twist and turn in intricate ways. And based on the way they vibrate, they gain the properties of different elements, like a photon, a quark, and so on. Another strange realm in the quantum world is what we call quantum entanglement. Once two particles interact, they become entangled. It's kind of like being linked together, but in opposite forms. If you measure a particle to have a positive spin, the other linked particle must have a negative spin. Let's say these two dots on the screen are a girl and a boy ice skating and facing each other. When they push off from each other, they head in opposite directions. If a third person measures the velocity and mass of the girl, they will know the momentum of the boy without ever seeing him. Classical physics would refer to this as the conservation of momentum, but in the quantum world, this is more like the entanglement momentum. Einstein once referred to entanglement as spooky action at a distance. One particle can effectively know something about another particle instantaneously, even if those two particles are a universe away from each other. This is also known as quantum teleportation. In 2019, scientists confirmed that information could be passed between photons on computer chips, even when the photons were not physically linked. And this is huge. Another crazy principle of quantum mechanics is quantum superposition, which refers to the fact that quantum objects can be in more than one state at the same time. For example, most of you learned that an atom is mostly empty space between its nucleus, protons and neutrons, and electrons. And you might ask yourself, what exactly is that empty space? An electron's position is not defined by where it was a second ago, but instead by what's called a probability cloud. An electron has X percent chances of being over here and a Y percent of being over there. No one can certainly know where it is until an observer actually looks. And that's because the electron is in what's known as a superposition. 
As said earlier, this subatomic particle has a wave function, meaning it exists everywhere simultaneously. So, electrons are spread out around this empty space, and this area is known as an electron cloud. German physicist Werner Heisenberg once explained that precise information about the state of an object in the universe at a given time is impossible to determine. He was right. The quantum world is undeniably governed by probability. But he went on to conclude that if it were possible, we would not have precise knowledge of both the future and the past, but only statistical information. Quantum mechanics is currently the best description of the nature of the particles that make up matter. It is a pretty strange field because it's drastically different from our everyday experience. And we have seen that as objects get larger, the effects of quantum physics get tinier. And the best way to describe things in the quantum world is if you see particles behave as waves. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you do not miss any upcoming videos.